Well, this week is big news in the world of golf. Saudi-funded Live Golf Tour uh, heads to the Trump National Golf Club in New Jersey. The tournament's been accused of helping to sanitize Saudi Arabia's international image. A 9-11 family's United Group have eviscerated both the defected golfers and the former President Trump for taking part. But joining me now is John Daly, a two-time major golf winner, Trump friend and supporter, and a great character. John Daly, what a pleasure to have you on my show. Thanks for having me, Pierce. I love you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. I love you, brother, too. I, you know, there was a moment at the Open in Scotland <laughs> when you were walking past. I think you were wearing your Hooters trousers. And I shouted your name. And you suddenly turned. You didn't know it was me. You just turned and looked at a group of people. And you gave us a hilarious smirk and a great wave. And we all just melted in awe at this great man doing his thing. <laughs> well... I love my fans, man. I've always loved them. I've always played for them. And, you know, wherever I've gone in the world to play golf, I've always had a home team advantage, and it's been awesome for 30-something years. It's just been great. Well, you deserve it because you, you give a lot back to the fans, I think. And also, you play golf the way I play, which is, you know, have a beer, have a game of golf, have a cigar maybe, have a bit of fun, smile on your face. But right now, John, golf is going through a very difficult, fractious period between the official PGA Tour and this rival live tour funded by the Saudis. It's now come to uh, Trump's course. He's up there. He's been promoting it. What do you make of this route? And how do you think it ends? Well, we'll find out in the long run. But I beg Greg Norman to let me be on the live tour because, you know, we work really hard. And, and I play with Brian Harmon in a practice round and some other guys in the practice rounds of the British Open. And it's like... We play pro lambs, we get it, okay? That's what is a backbone of a lot of our tournaments. But Brian Harmon says, give us a box of chocolates for the effort. We make tent visits, we do this, we do that. I play two to three pro lambs every week on the Champions Tour. And, you know, we don't play for a lot of money on the Champions Tour. So I almost feel like, okay, I'm not getting a lot out of this. What, what, what are we doing? Look, I'd rather play with amateurs and the pros sometimes, but. You know, we've got to get compensated for that. And the Live Tour has given players that. It's given, you know, they play pro-ams. It's a big party. They play for a lot of money, which these guys that are on that tour deserve that money. And I think there's a lot of other guys that deserve that money, especially this old man. But, um, <laughs> and John, but what, what about the morality know, think... issue? Because I, <laughs> I think, and I wrote this for the New York Post, there's a lot of hypocrisy about morality in sport, that a lot of the PGA sponsors, for example, do lots of business in the Middle East and so on. Uh, do you think there's a lot of hypocrisy here? Oh, Pierce, let's not talk about that. They don't want to be mentioned in that because, you know, of all the labor laws and stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's unbelievable. The politics is so stupid in this. I could talk about Nike. I could talk about other companies that little 8- and 13-year-olds are building shoes for Nike. Okay, we don't want to get into that, right? You want to talk about labor laws? We're talking about golf. Guys that are playing golf, it's an international sport. Jed, the prince of Saudi Arabia, is a great guy. Um, and he's given so much money to golfers that deserve it. Well, there's some that aren't deserving it because I should be on that tour. Yeah, why are you on the tour? You'd be my first sign. I know all the bands. Well, Greg says he's not doing any more, and I'm too old. So, but <laughs> let me go into entertainment, and get all my, get all my friends to do the concerts and stuff, and let's, you know, it's playing with Bryson DeChambeau in the British Open. I'm sorry, the Open Championship. Yeah. I can't say British anymore, but uh, was an eye opener because he said it's the greatest thing on earth. We still play a pro am. It's two pros, two amateurs. Yeah, it's what it should be anyway. You're done in four hours. Yeah. And we play for a lot of money, which we deserve to play for. But, you know, I just wish, to sum this up, I wish every tour would get along where everything can work out. Because I think that's, you know what, John? Golf I think is that's such a, a great game. I think that's the way it's going to go. They're going to have to do a deal because so many top players are, are, are defecting. They're going to not have a PGA Tour at this rate. Talk to me about Donald Trump for a moment. Uh, he's an old friend of yours, uh, old friend of mine. Um, what do you make of him? What do you think about him running again for president? Would you endorse that? Daddy Trump is the greatest president we ever had. I go back to the Reagan era and Bush Sr. Um, what he did 
with kind of a, a downfall of presidency with Obama, nothing against Obama, but um, Daddy Trump came in, and what I love about him, he said everything that he was going to do. Unfortunately, the Biden administration did the opposite of what they said they were going to do. Our country is in shambles. Our middle class people are starving. They're not doing anything for them, and it just makes me sick. Kamala Harris is supposed to protect the border. She's been down there. She went to El Paso to have drinks and a Mexican food. It's, it saddens me that the way this administration is, the whole White House is so corrupt right now. It's all about them making money, and we'll worry about the American people later. Donald Trump never took a dime from the American people, never took a salary, and is one of the best presidents that ever lived. John, we call this show Piers Morgan Uncensored for a reason, because we like uncensored guests. You are an uncensored guest. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much. I love you. And what you did for the Queen's Jubilee, I couldn't take my eyes off the TV. Oh. Your knowledge of her was so amazing in the family. Thank you for that, because I, I got a new opening to what the Queen and royalty was all about. That's brilliant, if Princess John. Diane was still alive, I'd be... I would be married to her. <laughs> John, great to talk to you. All the very best to you. Thank you. See you, buddy.